Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Blues Talk. And as usual, never a dull moment. After winning three games in a row, we've lost 3-0 against Derby and we're still in the bottom three. So where do we stand? Where do we stand on the team, on Cottrell, on the transfer window and on how we're going to do going forward? I'm going to call up Brummy Joe and see what he thinks. Yes, Joe. You are, Dave. Are we? How's it going, mate? Not bad, yeah. Not, not too bad, you? Things have started to look up a bit. Well, yeah, it couldn't have got, couldn't have got too much worse, could it? <laughs> no. We have started to pick up some results, and uh, things are starting to look a bit less. <sighs> it's less brief. drastic than it was. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But the, you know, there's still areas, areas of concern and stuff like that. But yeah, it's better. So let's look at Saturday. Obviously, we lost 3-0. Were we a little bit unlucky? Or is it more a case of things are back to normal? Um, to be fair, you know, we 1-0 down at half-time. Yeah. At half-time, speaking to Lee, and I thought, yeah, you know, we might be 1-0 down. We're playing, we're playing well, but there's a difference, isn't there? When you, when you lose a game, but you perform, you perform well. You oh, know, yeah. I, I thought that first half, it was one of our better first halves at home. You know, yeah. four four minutes in, we've hit the post. Jonathan Grant's one yeah. guy. <laughs> yeah, and obviously their goal there was a big element of luck to it. Yeah, yeah. Well, when, you know, when I, I said something on Twitter after, and I said uh, normal service resumed, more it's more to do with the result and yeah. the the luck that that sort of. I'm not taken away from Derby. They won three 0 You know, they they were. Yeah, they were a good side. Man. Yeah, they. You got to think they're second in the league. Sometimes you've got to be a bit realistic about things. Yeah. And you know you might lose a game, but the lads put a shift in. They they performed well. We've we've identified a weakness of ourselves, which is, you know, in these past few games where we've sort of gone on a bit of a run, we haven't gone behind once. Yeah. So we're okay at taking the lead um, and sort of defending. We're okay at that. We can see out a result. But when it's up against us and we're losing. We it's haven't we haven't got the uh, the creativity in the side to score enough goals to come back from being one 0 No, we we need a we need a team to be open enough for us to attack. If, if they're winning and they're cl- they're closed off, keeping possession, yeah, they're going to do exactly what Derby did. Wait for us to attack or be open at the back, counter us, and they were they were doing it so clinically, Derby. Well, it's textbook Gary Rowett, isn't it? Yeah, we saw it yeah. for years, so we knew what was going to happen. But yeah, like you said. We didn't play badly. I think about it and I think their fans who came in big numbers were really quiet up until the point where they scored. I remember it being... I mean, I remember the actual... They made a bit of noise when they scored, but it was 55 minutes when they scored the second goal where yeah. they actually made some proper noise. Yeah, that's right, yeah. To make of that what you will, but, you know... <laughs> you know yeah, yeah, nothing yeah. against Derby, but if anything, it's a, it's a credit to us that we quieted them a bit. And yeah, the, the game could have gone... Another way, obviously, in our position, you need luck against a side like Derby. And we didn't get it. Yeah, it was another one of them um, what-if uh, moments. And I know Cottrell likes to use the word if a lot, but this was a, another case of if it was any other team, that grounds header would have gone the right side of the post and gone in. Yeah. But, you know, and, and that changes the game, you know, because they, they go up the other end, they score a fluky goal, we're up against it. But they, they wanted to play. You know what I mean? And, yeah. And that, we, we haven't really seen a lot of that at the start of the season, but they you can tell they're up for it. We were we were going for, we were trying to, our best to get back into it, weren't we? And yeah. I'd rather lose 3-0 and try than lose 1-0 and just give up, you know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, not all 3-0 defeats are created equal. And at the end of the day, we did give it our all. We didn't have enough quality in the final third. And we're going up against a side that was just clinical. So yeah, exactly. I, I don't think we hang our heads in shame over that one. No, no, no. There, there are certain games where I really felt uh, down afterwards, but that, uh, that that wasn't one of them. Yeah. That wasn't one of them. However, we talk about Cottrell and we talk about not getting luck. Were there, in your opinion, because I know there were in mine, were there things that could have been done to maybe change the game a little bit before it got out of hand? 100%. Oh, mate, I was, I was sat in my chair crying out for a substitution <laughs> for at least 25 minutes. Yeah. Um, it might be longer, but uh, I mean... I'm not, I can't remember what time he brought Shay on, but it was after the second goal. Yeah. Um, but but the the hotter one for me was criminal. 
Potter's on the bench, and and you're two okay. You're two nil down. You've got a very creative player, your record transfer on the bench. Yeah. Right, he wants to prove himself. I've got no doubt about that. Um, and he he's proven that he's not you know he's not Fabrini, is he? He might have had a big. Nah, big he's got a lot more to him than Fabrini. Yeah, exactly. I, I think he just needs a bit of confidence and a bit of luck, and and us to suit him a bit. And when he came on. He, he, even though he was only on for seven minutes or eight plus extra time, added time, he did well and he he got the ball into the box. He made a difference. He did, which is is saying something when you've only got seven minutes on the pitch. But why he didn't bring him on sooner, I'll never know. Because in that situation, we in that ground all know what Rabbit wants to do second half. Yeah, we all knew how difficult it was going to be to break Derby down. So bring on the one player that we've got that might be able to do it. Because I'm looking around, I'm seeing bloody Craig Gardner, who can't make a pass. He's hitting free kicks 10 yards over the bar. And we've got Hotter sitting on the bench. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like you said, Um, we've got to make everything as easy as we can for Hotter right now. He's clearly lost his confidence. He's not comfortable. But he's got it within him to be the best player in our side. And we've got to help him. And it's not going to help him bringing him on when the game's already lost. Yeah. I, 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 I'm genuinely saying we should, we should start him. I mean, I know we've started him before and we've taken him off after 60 minutes or something, but I, I just think he brings a lot more to the game than Boga does, and it might be an unpopular opinion, but um, I'd, I'd play him over him. Well, the thing is with Boga, he had that goal at Sheffield United, which obviously we were all buzzing about. Yeah. And it's given him, I suppose, a, a bit of a grace period where we don't second-guess him, but he's back to doing that stuff where... He's not providing it's for anyone else. It's head down, obviously. He's, he's trying to get past three people at once, and it doesn't lead to much. Yeah, he's far, he's far too predictable in his play. Yeah. Um, whether he's going to make a pass or go to the edge of the box and shoot, you can tell what he's going to do about five minutes before he does it. Yeah. And it's it's just, you need to be a bit more dynamic in what you're going to do. Um, and, we, we, you know, Cottrell said at one stage, he identified that that was an issue of his, that his end product wasn't really there. And he says, if you beat four men and then the rest are back, you know, it doesn't make, it's, there's no point. Yeah. But for me, I would start harder because I feel like he, he's more of a head up, get the ball in the box sort of guy. And that he does make, and when he makes runs, they're, uh, they're, they're more effective. Um, yeah. I know it's not been what we expected so far, but also he's our player. You know, let's, let's give yeah, our players point, some yeah. time. You know, yeah, there's no point developing Boga for Chelsea so that he gets all his mistakes out of the way now. That's no good yeah, exactly. for us. We can't afford it. And defensively, well, it, it does frustrate me because I understand he's a young player and he's and he's focused on the attacking role. Yeah. Um, but in the Championship, especially, you have to you really have to put in your defensive work as well. And he looked lost at times. Yeah, I don't think he's interested in that off the pitch, really, is he? Yeah, he really, yeah, he really did look lost, and and you, you can have the luxury of not having to worry about that in certain teams. But in our team, in a, in any team of the championship, really, you have to put that that shift in as well. Yeah, but well, yeah. if if you're well, saying that you'd start hotter, it's that question yeah, well, again. Where where would you play him? Well, that's, that's a good that's a good question, and I don't know if I've seen enough of him to decide where would be best for him now. Ideally, it's wherever he can he can play best. We we know he can play on the wing, but people have sort of sussed him and what he likes to do which is put it onto his left and uh, whip it around like Chris Burt used to do yeah um, but yeah maybe you could play in that sort of number 10 number 10 role year in the whole um, I, I think he could do that I, don't, I, I, I ain't got a reason why he couldn't do that and develop into that role and that would be what we're missing really because if you look at our midfield right now we've got yeah. three centre defensive mids yeah Really, like Gardner, Gardner, you know, on his, he has a good game now and again. He can play a pass through, and against Sunderland away, he was he was putting balls through to Gallagher all the time. Mm. But he's not, he's not always uh, that good, you know. Um, Put it this way, good. like I'd love Gardner to be our best player, you know, local mm. hero, all the rest. But he's had a lot more bad games than good games since he's come back. Yeah, exactly. But that's that's what we're looking for. And if and if we don't want to put him there, and if we want to put him wide, we need someone. I feel like we need a ball playing midfielder in January this month. Oh, we need it desperately. But are we going to get it? I don't know. You hear a lot of things. You, you know, we don't know what's happening. And sometimes it's better when we don't know a lot about the transfers that are going on. Yeah. Because the other clubs don't either. Um, 
And, you know, if you're after a good player, you want to sort of keep it quiet. But my my head's telling me that it's, we've just not got a lot going on at the minute. I don't um, think we've got any money to bring anyone in. I think that's the issue. And I think... Yeah. We have spent a lot of money in the past as well. We're, we're getting a few players out the door. Um, and you talk about, you know, it's not an endless part, is it? We spent a lot of money. We spent like 20, 25 million. Awful lot of year. money. And uh, a lot of money on wages as well. Yeah. Uh, and you can you can see they're trying to trim the wage bill. I mean, David Cottrell's gone. Ensue's gone. Are you going to miss either of those two? Um, not Ensue. Um, I think Cottrell would have still done a job for us. Um. He's the sort of player that puts the shift in, and he's a good he's a good crosser of the ball as well. He gets the ball in the box. Not, he's the best crosser we've had in a while. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I don't think um, I don't think he would be on massive wages either. So unless he really wanted to go, and it weren't just happen, you know, there was he just didn't want to play. Yeah, I've got mixed feelings on him because one thing I will say is, even at the start of his Blues career, when back under Clark, he was really doing good for us. Yeah. Even back then. I know from uh, a couple of friends that he was talking big about how he wants to get a move away and he wants to be at a bigger club. And then you had the uh, the Euros, obviously, where he's there with Wales. <laughs> he's giving it the big enough. I think it all went to his head a little bit. And he was in for a bit of a rude awakening because, from what I've heard, he was offered a round to different clubs. And I don't think they had to pay a price to have him. And no one in the Championship wanted him this past summer. And obviously, yeah. he feels like he should be in the side. And when he wasn't getting in the side, I think it was really doing his head in and he just wanted out. And who yeah. knows, people talk about the mood not being right in the squad. Yeah. He could have been one of those that was affecting that. Yeah, and apparently, I've, I've heard Ensu might have been one of them players as well. But again, I don't, I don't really know. You just hear things, don't you? Um, Ensu, I'm, but, I look at Ensu, I mean, look, I don't know. I've never really bought the idea that Ensu was a bad egg. I just think he was a bad player. Yeah, yeah, yeah he really... Uh, yeah, he was. Um, At least yeah, for us. That, that's the thing. It can be unfair on, on players. Um, but that's... You know, you, you really don't know who, who the bad eggs are. And you can pick out the wrong players sometimes. Um, but no, he wasn't a good player. He wasn't very good for us either. Middlesbrough seem to like him. Well, that's no. the thing. That's where we have to qualify, don't we? And we have to say, look... He must have it in him. Just not when he puts on that blue shirt. Yeah. Which can be said about quite a few. Did you hear about him, though? He uh, scored on his debut. Did he? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know what? I, yeah, great. That's improved my mood. That's just <laughs> typical, that is, isn't it? Yeah. If we talk about players that we need to get rid of, I think we do yeah. need to get more off the wage bill before we bring anyone in. Jason Lowe? Is he a gunner? There's a couple. There's a couple that, that we've brought in over the summer and we've not played. I'm not sure what wages Jason knows on. But if we're not going to play him, why is he here? Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't mind that. I think but a bigger issue things. might be uh, Kusha. Oh, I've heard, I've heard that, yeah. But if that's the case, is Connell Truman good enough to be our backup? You know, because Stockdale's been injured before, Kusha's come in and he's, and he's definitely saved us points. He's a great keeper. Yeah. If we, like, are we just going to get some random, just cheap keeper in to cover, like a, like a leg stins? Love leg stins, but, you know, <laughs> not amazing. I, I don't know, I'd rather us keep him. I, I would, because I think I think it's important, but he might want the game time as well, and he's getting, you know, he's getting on a bit now. So if he wanted the move, I wouldn't hold it against him. What if they said to you, look, we've got a choice. We get rid of Kushak and Jason Lowe, and when we do that, we can bring in... A lone player from a big club, I don't know who, but a lone player that might add something to the midfield or maybe a striker. Well, you know, if, if it has to be done, then then you, you'd do it, wouldn't you? Because, uh, you know, not, not times out of 10, Stockdale's going to be able to uh, pull on that blue shirt and he, hopefully he stays fit. And we might be able to get a backup for, for you know, on a free or cheap or something like that. Um, yeah, well, I think I would because there are more pressing matters in that squad, aren't there? there yeah. You know, even if the keeper's going to be off for a couple of games, every single game, we, we're we going to need a player that, uh, you know, a playmaker, some sort of ball playing midfielder, yeah. a striker. It's going to be, it's a lot more important. What about Cameron Jerome? I think that one's gone off the boil, hasn't it? Yeah, I've heard his, um, I've heard Derby, did I sign him? 
I would have had him. Oh, you definitely take him. Yeah, definitely. Oh, I know in people have said bad things about him and that he don't know where the goal, you know. But he, he would definitely put in a shift for us. And he's still got pace, I've heard. But, yeah, that one's off the table. The yeah. only thing I've heard in terms of transfers is this left back from Feyenoord. Yeah. I mean, I've never seen him play. Um, Neither have I, no. <laughs> could be another one where we're trying to replace Grounds, but Grounds yeah, still ends up I, keeping his place. Yeah, I... For me, I don't think it's the... I mean, we could be looking at a few players and the left-back's the only one to surface in the news. So, yeah. you know, if, if, you, if you can afford that as well. But if we're looking at if we're looking at spending our money carefully, we only have so much to spend. Left-back isn't the issue. We've got, we've got a caterer out on loan for, for whatever reason. He's not getting much game time in Italy. Grounds is doing a terrific job, I think. He's been um, one of our better players. Yeah, and, and throughout all the all the turmoil that we've been through from from back a few years ago, he's always been the consistent really and he's you know, he's had some unfair stick. Mm. But but yeah, he's he's, he's getting he's getting better and he, he, the thing about Grounds is he's a true professional. He really is. Yeah. Um and he's had a lot of stick and there's there's things that have been happening over Twitter and stuff like that. Um but but yeah, I think a lot more fans are noticing that now. Here's a scenario. Let's say in two years' time, Jonathan Grounds is still our left back, and Steve Cottrell is still our manager. What would the odds have been on that a few two weeks ago? Start, two years' time from now. Yeah, uh, I'd like to think we'd progress in, in two <laughs> years. I don't, it's not so much Grounds; it's Cottrell because I think yeah. he's quite limited in his abilities as a manager. Yeah, let's talk about Cottrell. I think we um, both agree, as good as he might be on the training ground, which is debatable. Once the game starts. He struggles to affect it. Exactly. And he yeah, subs I mean, that, that, time and time it, again. Yeah. Not just the hotter one that we were talking about. I can remember several games where he's made a sub and it's got a sarcastic cheer from the crowd because it's something we should have done 20 minutes ago. Yeah. yeah it's almost like there's some sort of delay with his... Uh, with his more, like, I don't know who he's, whoever he's speaking to. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, yeah... Um, Credit where it's due, we were in a very bad place, and he was, you know, you talk about it, he must be under a lot of pressure. Oh, massive. Um, but there's not, as, as again, as I said last time, there's not a lot of sympathy you can have when he's taking the drug, etc. But yeah. he's, only, he's, he's turned something around, he's made some sort of change. Now, if it's entirely up to him, I don't know, but I think he earned some time when he got that free win streak. Yeah. But, you know, so. People are saying he stumbled upon it. He might have, you know, he probably has stumbled upon a women winning formula. Um, you know, it's taken time, but he's got the players fit. Yeah. Uh, and, and going, but as you say, once that team sheet's out, we've got the lineup ready. Yeah, that's a good lineup. We've we've found it three times in a four times in a row. We've played it, and um, we think okay, so so we found a bit of a formula now. Probably stumbled upon it. But once the game kicks off, that's it really. And it's like, how will it unfold? If we score first, it might be a good game, might win it. Yeah. If we concede, yeah, they, they, it's, they can't change a game. And that's a big, big thing to say about a manager. There's only so many things a football manager needs to be good at. And one of them is game management. And clearly we're saying, and we're not the only ones saying this, Cottrell hasn't got it. Well, you, you, you think about it. There's not, as we say, we've drawn comparisons with him uh, and, and talks about him being a better coach than he's a manager. What's the difference, really, between being a coach and a manager? Mainly, look, it's dealing with the press and it's dealing with game management. Yeah, and he's not and good he's at dealing at with the press. He's bad at both of those. Yeah. He's, he, he, gives off, he gives off sort of um, unprofessional attitude for me. Like, he'll, he'll either be quite cocky. Very cocky, or, yeah. Or a, a passive aggressive, or it's yeah, just not yeah. right. It's not right. He's and got the air match. of someone that's achieved so much in the game, and obviously, look, he's where he is because he's got something about him. I'm not questioning that, but he goes on like he's Alex Ferguson the way he treats the press. <laughs> and I'm not just saying this. I've spoke to people in the press who confirm this. Someone will ask him a completely innocuous question, and he'll take offence to it. Someone will okay. ask him. Oh, how's Sam Gallagher doing lately? And he will read that question as saying, 
oh, you've really mistreated Sam Gallagher. You've played him out of position and you've hurt his confidence. Does he hate you? You can't be that way as a manager, I don't think. No, and I think even if, like, even if, right, that, that reporter was was trying to, to ask, like, imply that, right? Yeah. Then a proper manager, like one that's good with the press, would find a way to deal with it properly. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and possibly turn it the opposite way, where a question like that could say, Oh yeah, he's doing well. You know, we've uh, we've we've found his you know we found his role position. He's he's much more confident now. He's scoring goals. He's got that aggressiveness about him. Yeah. You know. So that's it. it's 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 one of the one of them traits, and I don't know what it is about him, but it's it's I'm not I'm not liking it. I'm not a fan of it. I miss I miss Harry Redknapp's interviews. <laughs> well, Redknapp was the master of the interview, wasn't he? That's the thing. Yeah. And if we uh, if we go back to that Burton game. I know a lot of people aren't happy in retrospect with what Harry said, calling out the players. But I think that was that was aimed more at the uh, the board than the team, because I really think yeah. he was getting frustrated. Because at that time we weren't bringing players in, and he was getting frustrated with the fact that his targets they just weren't materialising. And oh, we have, yeah. we have and got then... problems like there's the hierarchy behind the scenes when it comes to making a signing. I think Cottrell <laughs> is facing that same thing now. Well, yeah, I mean, we, it was sort of, it seemed to have been left quite late as well. Um, everyone being signed on deadline day, really. It was quite yeah. exciting for us at the time, but little did we know it was just going to cause issues with the squad harmony, stuff like that. Um, yeah. But, yeah, you look at it and you think, you look at what Cottrell was saying to the fans at Fulham uh, um, after the game. It, it can't, can't really be recorded or anything like that. You, you're thinking, what, what is it that we can't know about and you look into the board as well and the people saw on these players you've got well, you know we, we got this uh, Vatir in I think uh, Darren Dean Darren as well Dean, yeah. and when you know when they announced that we're bringing these people in I was thinking okay so we've got specialists you know they know they know different leagues they might know some hidden gems but then you're thinking do they have too much control over transfers are the board too strict with it and you look at you look at what's happened in the summer, and you think, well, are they going to continue to use that system? Because for me, it would seem quite naive as well. Yeah, and I think you've got to have a strong bond. If you're going to have someone that isn't the manager making those decisions, there's got to be a bond between him and the manager. And yeah. one way that I feel for Cottrell is that he doesn't have that. And I, I think some of the comments that he's made in the press have shown that he doesn't have the control. Left in the dark a bit. Yeah, seems. definitely. He was talking about the Arsenal fullbacks and whether or not we're going to keep them for the rest of the season. Because I know with Bramall at least, the deal was a season-long loan. Yeah. But now they're talking about sending him back. Who knows if that's a good decision. I mean, again, it's another big earner that we get off the wage bill. But Cottrell said, the talks are going on, but I'm not involved in the talks, so I can't quite give you any info. Yeah, what does that say to you from a, from a football manager as yeah. well? So I, I still think... The problems do run deeper than Cottrell. Yeah, and you, you talk about Bramall as well, and uh, the, these players that we've signed. Um, so Bramall, you've also got Cole Jenkinson, who's played 20 minutes in, got injured. Yeah, he seems to be back fit again now. But again, we've got we've got a very good right back, and we've got a very good young right back in Cogley as well. So we've got Colin, we've got Cogley. I'd assume Jenkinson's on quite a high wage. We're paying a good percentage oh, yeah. of it. 20, 20 plus k a week. Yeah, so I I wouldn't be bothered if he he went as well if it cleared cleared the way. Um, same for Bramall. Like when Bramall came in initially, I was confused. As I think I said this in the last call we had, we you know we've got we've got Keita who is a, a capable you know not not amazing but he's exciting capable left back. Maybe yeah. he's more of a wing back, but then again, so is Bramall. And I'm I'm just I I always think prioritise the players that you own. Yeah, like you said before, definitely. Exactly, yeah. But uh, I'm not too sure about it. And uh, it doesn't fill me with a lot of confidence for the future, really. Um, yeah, there's a lot we don't know. And I know uh, Amadou is looking into a few things as well. Yeah. Um, well, he's got his finger on the pulse. And he's, he's saying, until we get rid of more players, there's no chance of bringing anyone in, at least for a fee. M yeah. Maybe if we get rid of a few more, bring someone in on loan, but... We've got all yeah, these. I mean, we've got the questions about financial fair play now as well. 
exactly. He, he, talking to trying to get a bit more uh, positivity. Anyway, um, it's just just been announced that Kifton Belt's been been a uh, Kifton Belt's been given two years hey. extended contract, which is a good one to put to bed. Definitely, he's, um, he's been really really good since the deal fell through with Derby. Yeah, and, and to think to think where we are now, where would we be if you know it was it was a case of a signature in the wrong on the wrong box yeah. or the wrong yeah. line or yeah. something. So where would we be if you just put it in the in the right one? But the fact he's signed the new contract means he's happy, yeah, and that's 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 you know. Yeah. Well, now we, yeah. you know we can at least say they've done something right there. Clearly, he yeah. wanted to stay. We've paid him what he uh, what he was after. Yeah, and that, that's one player that we can now say, okay, that's someone that the fans like, and we've got him for two more yeah, exactly. seasons. He's, yeah, he's ours. He's ours. And you, and you, you think about Derby and everything, and the, uh, it was quite worrying. And you think maybe he does want to go and play for a better team. But the fact is, he's played for his future here when he could, he, you know, he signed he signed a new deal, and it's, it, there's a chance we could be relegated next year as well. well. Yeah, I think that's a credit to him because he could have easily gone elsewhere and he would have had a good excuse to. Yeah, he could have signed a good deal and, it, you know, no one could hold it against him because exactly. we tried to kick him out in the summer. Exactly. Um, but yeah, that's that's just one of them. It's one of them players. I'm very, I'm very glad he's still here because he's he's really proven himself and it was, it was sort of, that's it now. We've, we've put to bed any rumours for that and that was the only real big outgoing rumour. Has he been our best central midfielder, do you reckon? Yeah. Yeah, this season, this season, um, over on, on average, definitely. So it, when we talk about the lack of creativity, if we were to, in a dream world, bring in a central midfielder who can pick a pass, who can unlock a defence, we'd have him next to Kifton Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, what ideally, what you want is is the sort of the sort of player that maybe he's got Championship experience, but definitely English league experience. Yeah. Um, you know. We might look at players from the lower leagues. I'm not sure, but I'm not against that. I, I just think you want a player that can pass the ball, but knows the sort of grit and and physicality of the league yeah. as well. We don't want a Fabrini. No, we don't want that. Um, but yeah, hope, fingers crossed. You know, that he said, I'm, I'm I'm sure he said at the start of the transfer window, it, it'll all be done in the last week, not the last day, but. I just hope we we bring someone in because there is, we do need we do need a player we need some sort of player and it, if it's the difference between us staying up and going down I think the board really has to I think they're making funds available well hopefully something happens mm. but obviously for now we've got what we've got Preston away on Saturday what's your lineup <laughs> I'm looking forward to that um, <laughs> <laughs> I. Oh, I'd probably play. Um, put McGurum on the left. I'd put Hotter on the right. Yeah. Um, now I think it's a bit early for Shay still. Um, don't want to don't want to rush him back in. So I'd keep him on the bench, but bring him on earlier if we need to. Uh, Gallagher up top, midfield three. Uh, it'd, be, it'd, it'd be the same. Yeah. It'd be the same. Like, there's not much better. No, there isn't. It's it's not like we've we've got loads of players who aren't making the squad that can change it for us exactly and, and you don't want to change the squad too much either because you know we are performing well with our, with our current season yeah, and like we said we played okay even though we lost 3-0 we should go into this game with confidence yeah exactly away from home um, you know go for it try and get something I'll take a point there um, yeah it's they've got an alright home record you know um, it, 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 10th in the league good side you feel like Hugo's going to score against us, yeah. uh, but yeah, that'd be my only change. I'd, I'd, I'd just take Boga out and put Hutter in because I think Boga, it's, I think he's time for out right now for me, and he needs to come off the bench to, to make a difference, prove himself again. So yeah, hopefully, I mean that should be enough, and we should put in a good performance. At least now we've got a bit of hope that we didn't have a few weeks ago. Yeah, we yeah, we exactly. know that we can. We can play a certain way, we can pick up results and there's a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, I, um, I it, it makes me think as well, like the situation we're in, how, how much Sunderland fans are feeling right now? Yeah. But, you know, because they've, they've, we've we've been around this, you know, we've been in this situation for, for years now. Um, 
you know, we had the bit of stability under Rowett, but we've been flirting with relegation this season. We've done it before. Yeah. And like you said, if we if we play the way we played against Derby um, for the rest of the season, we'll be okay. I agree with you as well, but there's there's the good, the positive we can take is that there's room for improvement. Yeah. Because if if we had you know we if we were all right, this is the best our, we can be, and we're just about scraping it. You might be looking at Bolton and and Burton. They're in form now. They're doing well. But for us, we're where we are, and we've got a lot of players underperforming. If we, if they can kick into gear, yeah, and start scoring goals and and doing well, we put a little run together. We should be okay. But you never know, with Blues. So are you saying right now? We're staying up. If you had to make a prediction, you know what? I um, in the last in the last call we had, I said I'd let you know. <laughs> I'd let you know in January. <laughs> it depends. Um, but you know what? I'm an optimist. Blues have been through hard times. We have. I I think. I think we've got what it takes to stay up, and not just from the players, but from the fans. I know they're going to get behind the team. Yeah. And I know that we, when hard times come, we rally together. You know, we 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 concede, and and you hear keeper on ring around the stadium. And yeah. I just feel like that is going to give us an extra, an extra push. Yeah. You know what I mean? I feel like the fans don't deserve to go down as well. We need, we need to be a bit more positive as well because we've we've been in this situation. You know, last day of the season twice now. You know, the feeling against. Uh, when we beat Huddersfield at home as well, the atmosphere, yeah. it's amazing. But you just don't want to be in that situation in the first place. I think all of our hearts could do without that this season. Yeah, you never know. Maybe uh, maybe Redknapp comes back for a, a free game to survive <laughs> <laughs> again. Yeah. Something tells me there's not much love lost between him and uh, Cottrell. I think I think that one was a, a short-term situation. I think Cottrell wanted the, the top job all along. Yeah, yeah, you could tell that when he didn't he didn't take the assistant as yeah, well, the yeah. assistant role. Yeah. But that's what it that's what is realistically. Um, I know we're going on a bit, but what's your opinion on Cottrell? Do you, like we we're, we're doing okay now, but can he can he keep us up? Not can Blue stay up, but can Cottrell keep us up? My opinion on him hasn't changed too much. I don't think he's the man for the job. I think he gets easily stressed. I think he stresses those around him. And I think sometimes he gets overly negative. Now, that's just me saying that from the outside. Who knows? The players might love him. What we've seen in the last few weeks could be a result of the players really wanting to rally around him. Because one thing you have to say is, if the players have decided that they don't want to play for him, then we wouldn't have had the results we've just had. Yeah. We wouldn't have had the decent performance that we had against Derby when we could could have gone into that game and just rolled over. Which, even though we lost 3-0, we didn't. Yeah, so that's a credit to Cottrell. At, you look at the Ranieri situation where, where the Leicester players were going to the board, or yeah. apparently, or, or you know, you can tell they're not really performing. Yeah. That's, uh, as, that's a point. As bad as things have been, and as much talk as we've had about problems in the squad, bad eggs and everything else, I don't think there's ever come a point where the players have point-blank decided they do not want to play for Cottrell. I think the problems, like I said, they run a lot deeper than Cottrell. I think a lot of the problems that the players have got are between themselves, financial and about things going on behind the scenes. They're not about Cottrell. Now, where I think the issue comes in is if we had a a really, really good manager who was a bright personality, who really had something about him, he could overcome that a lot quicker than Cottrell has. Yeah. Because Cottrell can talk about the players not being fit, but I don't think that's the only problem. You can't tell me that it's taken Cottrell this long to get the players fit and that's why we weren't getting results. This is their full-time job. I know. It's not going to take them six months. Yeah, exactly. And if it does, then again, there's bigger problems than Cottrell. Still, saying that, I can see him him getting sacked and he might, I don't know, he might not deserve it. I can see the next time and it will happen. We get a run where we're not picking up the best results. It's getting a bit late in the season. Yeah. Are they going to just hit the panic button and not even? I feel like they might. They might hit the panic button without even getting anyone. You know, not even looking at potential managers yet. 
and it might be another situation. You look how late they did it with Zola as well. They, they held on until three games to go, and I think they waited for him to walk. But it feels like he was just waiting for the... He, he wanted to stay for the money, and if he got sacked, then he got the money. But yeah, he, I mean, three games to go, they probably thought, you know what, we, we can't let him stay. Like you say, it's going to be very interesting if it comes down to a few weeks left in the season and we've gone on another bad run and we're still bottom three or even bottom of the table. You have to think they'd get rid of him. Yeah. But I think it, re- it, yeah. it will take us being bottom and looking like we're out of hope for them to get rid. Because I think they're, they're going to be stubborn now and they certainly aren't going to sack another manager if they haven't got what they think is a decent replacement. Yeah. Well, you are, you'd hope so. But I wouldn't put it past them. <laughs> I really wouldn't. That's the thing. It's, we can't predict it. That's um, football, I guess. Yeah. Football and it's blues and it's this season and it's all up in the air. The, the season's... You can say, the season's almost written off apart from us being in some sort of relegation battle. But hopefully we just have a kick into gear have some good away days give the fans something what they deserve now because you know we've had one away win all season yeah um, hopefully we can kick into gear now because you know we, you look we've sold over 2,000 for Preston now as well yeah it's just it's brilliant mate it's brilliant I love our fans best in the country if you ask me exactly and mm. I think that's that's what, what that's sort of why I'm optimistic and optimistic of us staying up because I think if anything happens um, and if it comes to it the players are going to want to do it for the fans yeah it's a cliche and people can say oh you're talking nonsense but I think and about you know, yeah. I think you about know staying up at gets... Bolton and I think about like you said the atmosphere we had against Huddersfield at home last season and at Bristol exactly and I truly think that's worth something that it, lifts it the does players make a difference and that's what you want to see in football. Exactly. Oh, I truly believe that the fans are a 12th man, especially when, when it's up against you. Yeah. And when it is in times, like, we turn up, we turn up in numbers, we make noise, and that, that just gives the players an extra, an extra 10%. Yeah, and we, we don't just make mindless, generic noise. We've got proper songs, we're proper rowdy, we're a proper football crowd. And honestly, as the years go by, there's so few teams you can say that about. What an anthem as well, keep on. The best. It is. And you look at you look at the ups and downs of being a blues fan. Whatever age you are, you know whether you're, you know you've been going fifty years, yeah. or you've been going ten years. You've seen joys and sorrows. You know it's it's just I wouldn't swap it for anything in the world. I I used to um, I used to say to my dad, why why? <laughs> <laughs> I used to say. What, Dad, why did you uh, why did you make me be a blues fan? And for a for a year for a year or so, he had to sort of drag me. And then it just you just fall in love, mate. Um, and I watched uh, I watched your diary from the Carling Cup final. Yeah. And oh, it just makes everything it just makes everything worth it. And you know, one day, whether it's the prem, whatever. Yeah. We're gonna have days like that, and it makes it all worth it. That's we know what, it. That's what we live for. Yeah, it's just oh, mate. Just love it. You're getting me excited for Saturday now. It's only, uh, <laughs> it's only Tuesday. <laughs> go, on, go on then. What's going to happen on Saturday? I'm going to be optimistic. I think it's going to be another. It's going to be a tense game. It's going to be tight. But you know they, they've not they've not got the best home form in the world, Preston. Um, they beat us at our ground. And I'd take a point, but I really do think if we get the first goal, we can win this game because we are we're good at seeing off games. Yeah. But ultimately, it comes down to who scores first. Um, I'm going to say it's us, and it's going to be a, a tight 1-0. It's going to be uh, Michael kifton Bell celebrating his new contract. 1-0 Blues. Into the box, Foley. <laughs> Top corner. I, but I'd take anything, mate. I'd take anything. I'd take it coming off uh, Jonathan Grant's you know, <laughs> heel. Uh, anything. Own goal, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen... I'm well up for it now. Looking forward to it. It's going to be a good crowd. Good away day. Let's do the business. Yes, mate. Keep on. So there you go, Blues fans. That's what Joe thinks. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And keep right on.